Jimmy Jesse, uh, thanks for coming. I will just start by... I didn't catch your name, sir. My name is uh, John H.T. Stewart. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, big brother, go ahead. Why you say, oh, oh what happened? You got him, my big brother. Thank you very much. I know I'm older than you are. You were born when, 68? 68. I was born 1954. So you see I'm, that? I'm by far older than you are. So far, I know. So that's why I call you big brother. Thank you very much. You already told us uh, you when you enlisted in the MPFL. This was in 1990. And you told us the circumstances under which you enlisted. Yeah. You talk about your training. How long did you train in... Uh, Burkina Faso. Well, uh, we, we, we did we did everything eight weeks, six to eight weeks. And what year was this? That was late 91, 92. Yeah, mm -hmm. 91, late 91 went to 92. 91, 92. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, this was before elections. So were you trained at Official military bases in uh, Burkina Faso. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Can you tell us the name uh, of the base where you are training in uh, Burkina? Well, in in in, in, Waka, in Waka, we're training Waka Dugu. Yeah, that was a military academy, and then in Tripoli was the uh, Mutala base outside of Tripoli. Now, uh, can you remember who was the commandant of the base in Burkina? Ah, so helping God. I want to lie to you, big brother. You might be better. Okay. Specifically, what kind of training did you undergo in uh, Burkina? Uh, we did. We did basic. Uh, we did basic combat training, advanced infantry training. Then we left to go on the other side where we did guerrilla operations, guerrilla ideology, anti-tracking. Now you mentioned the name of uh, Martina Johnson. Yeah. Uh, did she train along with you in uh, Burkina? Uh, she was trained, but not on the same base. She wanted to do artillery. I see. Yeah. Her, her training was for the same period, eight weeks? Hers was shorter. Was shorter. Um, and after that, then you went to, to Libya? Yes, sir. At the Mataba base? That's it. How you managed to know the name? You call it better than me. Well, that's all right. <laughs> and you were there for yeah, we how did, long? We, we, we did like about two and a half, three weeks. Two and a yeah. half, three weeks. Yeah. And after that training, big brother, you had to go into the bush to come out with a living deer to be presented. If you did, if the two went into the bush and they didn't come out with a living deer, you won't graduate. So uh, which part of Libya was it? Because Libya is mostly desert and uh, that's not So that, 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 that's, that, not that's what made you to graduate from there after going through that. That was, that's why I say it was all it was all a Tripoli. And you say you were how many there? No, I didn't tell you were well, how many there. Do you want to ask me were well, how many? I, I, then no, no. I, I said how many? How many or like people there? Would you? There were few. There were few. At the time, it was the MPRAG operating. So the the, the commanding chief at the time he was just trying his best to to organize himself to be prepared for for other eventualities. And then after your training, you returned to Liberia. Indeed, sir. And was stationed where after your training? Went to Banga. Executive Mansion Guard Tax Force. Yeah, Executive Mansion Guard. When I came from Tripoli, I was assigned deputy. I was assigned deputy commanding general for the first infantry brigade. Later on, I was a, I took all the responsibility as commanding general for the first infantry brigade, Executive Mansion. After the fall of Banga. We came back and I became deputy chief of staff under the command of the late Prince C. Johnson. He was the chief of staff in '97 because he was involved in an accident. Now, who was your commander when you came back? You were deputy, you said. Yeah, you that was the before the, the my, my, my the, when I was deputy chief of staff. Who was my commander? No, no, right, deputy chief of staff. When I was deputy commanding general. Yeah. It was uh, it one J Y. Chewa one way, he was Chewa one way. Is he still alive? Is he still around? He's still alive, yeah, he's still alive. I, I can find him for you. 
If you need to talk to him, we can get him. Those are those are guys are willing to come by jet that they have not been called upon. Now, while you were serving at the uh, executive mansion, guard tax force, who was the commander of the? Was it Mr. Cassius Jacobs? When I was the serving league? as commanding general. No, 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 no. When you served in the executive mansion uh, guard force. Oh yeah, before the fall of Mahai was the late Cassius Jacob. And yeah. you served, and you served under him. Indeed. Uh, what was the rank of Mr. Saboli at the time? Saboli at the time he was a uh, deputy MP commander. In fact, when I was promoted to the rank of brigadier general and assistant commanding general, that very day, uh, myself, so I became provost major general. For executive master presidential guard force. Was he one of those that went to Tripoli and Burkina with you? Uh, no, sir, he did not go at the time. If he went, I don't know, but uh, he did not go at the time we went. Now, uh, what would you know about the execution of uh, Cassius Jacobs? Well, Cassius was charged for negligence. Cassius was charged for negligence. Uh, since, uh, and who, were, and who were those who were involved in the execution? Who were those involved? I don't know. You know, they, they, this organization was, was a broad, broad based organization. So if we were on the other side doing something, the other people, just how you hear right now, the office on the street, they're doing another thing. You know what's going on there. So, you know, it was like that. But I was not part of, I was not part of that. Now I understand that his execution was videotaped and that he was beheaded. Uh, you know anything about that? Or were you, are you on that video thing? <laughs> no, sir. If I were, I would tell you. So that his people can be here and that we, we can reconcile if they have any differences. Thank uh, you very much. Was Mr. Sapoli involved in the execution of uh, uh, Mr. Jacobs as well? No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> sir, <laughs> that man, I empty, man. He, he, he. Now, at the time, who? Who can you say were the 10 top military officials of the MPFL? If you look at the chain of command, how did the chain of command look like? At the time you came back from training, was deployed in Banga, what would you say the command structure looked like? The top 10 in the hierarchy? Well, if you say, you know, this MPFL was a broad based organization, as I earlier said, because we have favorite divisions. We had the commander in chief. We have uh, the first president to be uh, the late Ino Dogodie. We are the, the, the other old man that came here and Scorpion, and you know, security light. Right? Say Scorpion? Yeah, Scorpion, security light. Or maybe Mose Black, that he named and he had during the war. Yeah. And he was the inspector general, so we, we yeah, but then we have people. Chief of Staff, we have Cassius Jacob, we have uh, uh, how they are, what the Marine Division, how you call it, but Nathan Gate, and we have John Tier, Army Chief of Staff, we have Ibe Wangwe, Artillery, you know. Yeah. Now, uh, where were you during Operation Octopus? Where were you at time? When was Octopus? 1992. Which October? Which October? I was in Bangalore by then because I just returned, you know, when. When octopus, but octopus, uh, I, I, yeah, I was in Bangladesh at the time. Did you participate? Octopus, I had full responsibility at the time. I told you that I, I returned. I was deputy commanding general. Later on, I became commanding general. So my my concentration was Pong County, Banga. So I did not octopus. Well, like I think octopus started away from my Bagley or 15 Gate. So I, I was not part of that thing there. That other operation was not part of it. I was there making sure that the president was safe and his family as well. So, uh, <clears throat> would you have any knowledge of the Kara Camp uh, massacre? Kara Camp? What Kara Camp? The incident that took place in Firestone? Yes, sir. It was far from Banga. Um, Kara Camp, it took place in Mount Gibi, our in Bon County. Now, there were some witness, witnesses who uh, uh, testified before the commission. Um, attesting that they were taken from uh, from Kara camp and taken to Banga. Did you see any of them? Did you know of any? Did you know of the presence in Banga any time of those 
who were taking from uh, they were taking to Banga at the Azagiri mansion. Well, Banga, the area demons of Banga is from where they go to Banga, bro, big if they were taking to the Azagiri mansion, big brother, then probably I may know, but if they weren't taken to the Azagiri mansion, but they were taken to Banga, so help me God. Now the witnesses said uh, specifically they were taken to uh, to the Cuttington uh, campus. You're not aware. And you didn't hear anything like that. No, 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 sir, no, sir. How about the uh, the Dupo Road massacre, Kalfi? Would you have any idea? Dupo Road. When was it? Dupo Road massacre. Well, this was uh, 94. 94. 94. 95. 94. 94, 94, 94, we are fighting to lift Banga up because the commanding chief had come on radio and saying three days we lift Banga up and it took us like almost three months to lift Banga up so we are basically there, we are basically on our side I don't know about Dubo Road now, Since you are lifting Banga up would you have any idea, would you have any idea of massacres that took place around Banga during the fight to retake Banga like for instance the Phoebe massacre do you have any idea? If there were massacres taking place in Banga? There were some massacres that took place in and around Banga. Uh -huh. Around the time that the MPFL was fighting to regain control of Banga. And one of such massacres, for example, took place at the Phoebe Hospital. But if were you aware? No, I was not aware, but let me just let me just uh you you know, let's learn. Phoebe, the fall of Banga we are not in control of Banga before we would have been in control of Phoebe. No, Phoebe was then Ilimo K at the time because they came from behind St. J, behind Cottington. So they were in full control of Phoebe Hospital and all the kind of area. So we have come from Ganta and attacking Banga from the Ganta Highway coming towards Banga. So anything across that side, big brother, no. no. I, I don't want to mislead the commission. Who do you remember as General Monami in the ranks of the MPFL? Oh, Paul B. Monami, yeah, he was one of the generals too. He was one of our generals. But not as an executive mansion. So he was with a unit called Gamma Force. Eh? I think, yeah, that was Gamma Force Division, Gamma Force Unit. So, what was this real name of this Monami, General Monami? We knew him to be Paul V. Monami. Paul, Paul v. v. Paul V. Monami, yeah. And because the name he got, Paul V. Monami, because he was assigned with the uh, former, the late Special Force Paul V. Oh, and because, yeah, so he took his name, Paul V. And because he was now Liberian, he had absent, he came from different country, Monami. Monami people, I don't know where they come from, Guinea, or somewhere. So you don't, you don't remember his real name? No, sir. Only Paul V. Monami. And, and, and we don't call him, we got another name for him, we call him Gordon Summer. Because sometimes we told the army people in the car, and the car he told what the chief called him someone used to ride, so he said and he was calling him someone. And that, yeah. So uh, where is he now? Probably, I mean, Prophet Monami should be here. I think I just got recent information that Prophet Monami is somewhere in the red light area. I think he was one of those captured at the time that was in Sevaloon for some time, and they were brought back. If you have any information on that, he was one of those captives that were in Sevaloon. Now, now that you mentioned Sierra Leone, what would you know of the MPFL involvement in Sierra Leone? Did Not you ever meet Fode Sankor in Banga? If I what? Did you ever meet Fode Sankor in Banga, the late Fode Sankor? I've only seen Fode Sankor on TV and in newspaper. I've not seen him one-on-one -on -one high looking at you. I know that I don't even know who to call Fode Sankor. So what would you know of the MPFL involvement in Sierra Leone? Did you go to Sierra Leone? Did you fight in Sierra Leone? That's why I said be better. We were fighting a riot. We couldn't, we couldn't solve our problem. We've been attacked all over them. We'll go several years to do what then? No, sir. I was not part of it. But you know that there were NBFL fighters there, though. There were Liberians fighting in several years. Just as several years were fighting in Liberia, too. And those Liberians came from the NBFL? Excuse me? And those Liberians came from the NBFL? Well, I don't know where they came from, though, but they were Liberians. Big brother. Yes, but you were in Banga then. Uh, we have information that a lot of looted items came from Sierra Leone and into Banga. So you never witnessed any of that. You never saw any of that. Well, you know, fighting while looting things came from all over. There was no sound or anything. I say it was looted from Sierra Leone. It was looted from Guinea. It was <laughs> no.
那呃。What you know of the group called the Angola Forces that belongs to the MBFL? Angola? Yes. Angola, Angola Forces. No, not to my knowledge, sir. Not to my knowledge, people. Are. You're not aware. You never, if you, you, if you can, if you can, you know, we can learn, then be probably, but maybe it was some other name, but Angola Forces? No. I can't remember, people. Are. So you, you were never part of the Angola Forces? No, Angola Fosse, our executive master presidential staff, deputy chief of staff. What are going to do Angola again? I know Angola. I'm going to sell you, I'm going to gain, I'm going to go Angola. Now, when the MPFL, you were in Banga. And uh, you mentioned that you were in charge of the, or you were deputy in charge of the executive mansion guard force that yes. had responsibility for Banga. Now we have information and reports that there were some executions that were carried out in Banga in broad daylight. One on Banga Broad Street, in fact two on Banga Broad Street. One was by Mr. Cassius Jacobs, who executed a man in Banga Broad Street allegedly for, open ha for having open fire. And two, the execution of another man by Mr. Sagwali, two were fighting. And he arrived on the scene and shot one and defied anybody to remove his body and that person's body was there for three days. Are you aware of all of this? Well, you say Kaza Jacob first. Yeah. Yeah. You say Kaza Jacob executed someone on Banga Broad Street because he takes shot firearm. Yeah. Why did he take shot firearm? Was it the time for the enemy were around there before he takes shot arm? But if, sir, if, sir. He, if he were executed for discharging firearms, then there could not have been an enemy because it would be justified to discharge a firearm with an enemy around. Fine, so then there was no need for him to, to discharge firearm among civilians. So if you're executed, be better. Then that shouldn't be. With a reference to somebody, yet yeah, somebody executed a soldier that discharged firearm, and it was my soldier, first brigade, first brigade. Come, he came from first brigade. Did you issue those orders? I did not issue those orders, but somebody had order that anybody come to Banga. That was the process now. We have all mail and all between us in our midst. We have representatives from the United Nations at the time of what? ECOWAS, eh? ECOWAS, or E. Yeah. At the time they were there among us. And in fact, we were this army people at the time. But these guys, when they come from the front line, they come and act like because they're just from the front line, so they, they are macho men. They come. Oh yeah, Sagwadi executed one of the soldiers of the first infantry from, from the first from the first from the first brigade under the executive master presidential guard. And I tell you what, I was in Lofa fighting when I returned that evening. They said, "Oh, chief, you know how the soldiers behave." So, "Oh, chief, your own man, you go execute one of your soldiers." So I, I said, "For your intent, God, Sagwadi, he killed more than two, three. He go kill one." Because you have no right to discharge to discharge to, 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 to discharge firearm in Bon County among surveillance. So somebody took high orders and you are carrying on your order. I went to my man and said I told him, my man, thank you for bringing calm. Yeah, because it was cool. You see all the things happening, all the execution happening now today. We knew that there was no there was no need, there was no reason for, for firing, there was no need for shooting. We, the only means we had was to go to elections. And that's why we were very on carrying on elections and we came we became successful. But does the discharge of the mere discharge of firearms does it warrant execution, warrant death? Let me go, give me one gun now, let me go on brush let me fire and see hey, the people will not kill me or they will not charge me. Well if you are operating as you mentioned earlier Within the context of the UCMJ, which is the Uniform Code of Military Justice, yeah, is there any provision anywhere in the Uniform Code of Military Justice? Oh yeah, justice? any in, 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 in charge of, in fact, that's the general order in charge in, in, in the start of firearm amongst civilians in, 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 in any situation. Yeah, that's where I need to be executed. 
So, Chagori, and thank God I was so young, man. I will not so I said. Well, thanks for confirming that he did execute somebody. He was here recently and said he had never executed maybe, maybe anybody. Maybe for the way you people put it to him, but Sagwari carried on instructions. He had orders to, to execute anyone at the time all men were in our midst. We were patrolling along with all males in our vehicles or echo mob in our vehicles. So anybody that discharged firearm to tarnish the repetition of the commander in chief, that's where I'm going to be executed. That's where I had to be executed. All right. Uh, what would you know about an incident that happened in James uh, Soy Town? I don't even know where it's James Soy Town. Bon Kante? Uh, I guess maybe in Basa. I guess. No. Let, let me learn. Probably. If you explain the story that I can be on the brief, you'll be better. Well, we we did have a, a, a witness that testified before us yeah. that in James uh, Soy Town, you were leading a you were leading a group of men and you asked and you ordered that the civilians leave the town because you were expecting an attack from LPC. So I suppose it was in Grand Bassa. But LPC did not uh, operate in, in Bung County. No, 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 they came from Bassa. Yes. Yeah. And then as, when they were leaving the town, you ordered your men to open fire and they did. A lot of civilians, including the witnesses' uh, children, were all killed. Can you recall any such incident? So help me God, upon the oath that I took, if I order any soldier to open fire on surveillance, I came all the way from Mount Kibi to come and testify here. On my way back, let the Lord take a course. Now, my uh, final question to you. The killing of, uh, or the death, you, uh, you have explained that this captain jumped from the vehicle. Yeah, Captain Sumo. Captain Sumo jumped from the vehicle and broke his neck. Yeah. But there were other accounts that you took an, uh, a bayonet and stabbed this man right before the Ministry of Defense. I have, as first battalion commander, I have access to soldiers. My security alone was more than 15, 20, more especially at the time of fighting war. I have my pickup and I had a bus moving with me. So if I want to walk my go take Captain Sumo, you are not enemy for me for myself to go take Ben to no sir. It's not true. I don't want to go into TJ, but I, I will tell the soldier and say do they want to that one, but not for me myself to go no way. I never had anything against him for myself to take Ben and took him. No, 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 sir. Did you uh give the body to the family for burial? No, I didn't because they were on the front lines. The incident occurred on the front lines. When you die on the front line, except maybe you 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 are general, you some top man that the body has to be brought. If we were bringing bodies from to Morovia, man, man, man. So uh, maybe we should, maybe we should the front line. We're, we're gonna use the Lane Street or Central Street main roads up to bury people. So which uh, are the front lines? This incident according so, on the same matter highway because LPC were coming from Babalu, Babalu area. And when you, test, when you get a bubble junction, I think that will carry out somewhere. There's a road leading to Bombay Hills and there's a road leading coming to Swain, Mega area, coming to Boje, Bubata, Bloje area. So in that area to, towards the front line, there where the incident occurred. But does it strike you strange that an officer who will jump off your vehicle and run to the Ministry of Defense and you put him back on, would not attempt jumping off the vehicle anywhere around Mon River, Bull River, Ricks. Oh, because when he made it attempt the first time, because we took everybody like, go oh, get on board and we're going. So we're going from the defense, there was nobody holding him or, you know, everybody felt that everybody had decided to go. Exactly. Right. So, and I want to so, say, why so, would he then choose to jump way over there? Then why he chose to jump on the first time? Because he was not willing. He yeah. was not willing to go to fight me, brother. I agree, but that was right in Monrovia. And that he thought, so he thought he could, he could have gotten away with it by 
jumping off the paper, go to defend God, defend ministry. So, oh, I have to help God now, so nobody can save me. Hell no, no. We put you on board to carry you to go fight. He's been paid. He told oath to defend his nation as a soldier, man. He took oath. Yeah, wait now. I'm just saying, if he jumped here in Monroe first, yeah, before Ministry of Defense, uh -huh. to get away, and you put him back on, yeah, and he jumped again and uh -huh. caused his death, yeah. My question is, why do you think? He would have chosen to jump off the vehicle near the front line. Cowards died many times before their death. When he could have jumped, water side, Douala, or oh, St. Paul oh, yeah, because or even Port River. Yeah, he, because he was closer to Monroe River. Because when he, he jumped the, when he jumped on the first time, and we put him back on for the pickup, he was not sitting by himself again. We had him now. And because we were closer to the front line where he was hearing jubilation as he was approaching the front line, that when fear got in and he thought he could jump, he thought he could escape and go run the pickup moving, he jumped off the pickup. How long had this uh, soldier, particular soldier, how long had he served in the military prior to that incident? Well, he had been in the military, I don't know. I, 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 I we need to find out from the G1. Did he have any combat experience? What do you think? Being in the military? The late captain being in the military, you are, if you have combat experience, you ought to have it because that's what you join the army for. But no, my question is, if he had combat experience, then why would he have been shaking? Since he's already in the combat area, why would he have been shaking to jump, to raise his life, jump off the vehicle, break his neck, when he could have gone into combat and even come out alive? Be better, uh, honorable steward, honorable commissioner. Huh. And uh, you see, some of these soldiers said that uh, the new airfare today. God forbid, we're praying for it, but walk on, most of them will put a gun down. Being trained is quite different from being over there on a fire. It, it took myself sometimes as a commander, I have problem being there sometimes, you know. So it, it, it's quite different. It's quite different. But with the rank of a captain, having served in the military, I would suppose. That he did have combat experience, having reached the rank of captain, having served in the air bell for some time, and I don't get the impression from you that he was a part of the MPFL prior to that time. And if he had been in the military, then he must have seen action. So combat would not be a new experience. It's a different thing when you come from training and go into combat for the first time. Probably, he, he, has, been in the probably he has never fought war before. Probably that, that brother had never fought war before. So, you know, big brother, this whole thing, that's why I wish the family, I don't want to go in detail for me to say more because I still feel that the, the family of Captain Sumo, I wish, if that's a, if that's a possibility, I know the head of the family won't come to give law. Uh, if after this thing, we need to find come to give law, let's bring the family here and we can sit down and talk and see how we can harmonize this thing. But I was never involved in the execution of Captain Flomo. And I think some, some well-meaning members of the family know that I was not involved. It happened, it happened at the time it happened. So let lady think the rest. Maybe those questions can come when we meet the family and we try to resolve the issue. But I want to say things maybe that would make family, some family member get angry and you know come out and say something else. I have children, I have four children. But have you met the family since? Oh, long time. I even I did what I had to do. I I I, I meet the children all. In the website, when our older woman said maybe we would be more closer, she won't be worried about the man say again. Thank you very much. One, two, three. Testing, testing. Thank you. So witness, thank you very much for your presentation. I apologize I was not physically here, but I heard most of it on the radio as I was coming. But there were parts that were missing. I may ask you a couple of questions that you can help me fill in those blanks. Um, first of all, the reason why you are now part of this particular inquiry activity is because some aim 
was listed amongst those from the 18,000 plus statements that we received who could be classified as an alleged perpetrator against various victim activities. So regrettably though, I don't have the detailed list of the particular accusations for your particular case. So I cannot deal with that directly. But I heard that you did try to answer towards one or two of them earlier. But what I'm concerned about is to understand your situation. First of all, I noticed that you confessed that you have been a high commander in the MPFL. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Could I you help? Your name, sir. My name is Coleman, Commissioner Gerald Coleman. Thank you. Um, how long have you been associated with the MPFL? Or were you associated, rather, with the MPFL? When did you join and when did you leave? Since I joined MPFL early in 1990, and I stayed with MPFL, I've not left. Okay. 1990. So it means you've worked with them straight through even after the 203 peace talks? Even up to now, I stay with them. Oh, so the MPFL is indirectly still an organized structure on the ground? I you look at it. You all say, your politician, you all say MPFL is not MPP. So if I stay with MPP, I stay with MPFL. Okay, I understand your logic then. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. That's why the future I wanted to work with some institution in, 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 in government, then, it, then the question to go ask me if I have affiliated with any party. Security man, you don't come talk about party, you only serve a, the serve a party that is in power. That what we took over. So I, I forgot it straight. I said no. They think if I can't, they will humble me, so I left it. Mm. Yeah. I see. I want to be part of the people. You can't, I mean, we party our way. Mm. Security okay. man, you got no party. You must just work to defend the nation. Oh, uh, so you, you, but the, uh, you said you're still with the MPP, right? Well, that's another aspect. Oh, I see. Adaha. Oh, okay, yeah. I see. So even though you're not, you are. All right, uh, 1990, how old were you, please? I was born 1968, 1990, check it. Uh, okay. uh, you know, the war, the thing, we did all kind of barber thing. I want to talk on the thing that said we did, because, but the Bible say, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away, and yet all things become new. You know, I got some I got some friends today from normal times. I got like Michael Williams, I got Lorenzo Hammer, Utero Massacre, Bayern Secret, those friends, Joe Lawson, those friends, those friends are good friends. They didn't even know what they call cigarette. But the politician that brought water, the poor in some kind of thing there that people are trying to still know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna talk here. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, I understand your heart about becoming new. Yeah. Regrettably, though, the Bible did mention things of this nature. The reality on the ground has been that not many people have become new as God has expected. Yeah. As a result, the conflicts, the suffering, the war, the abuses still continue over 6,000 biblical years since Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Okay, getting back to the hearing. Um, so then you... I'm concerned also about what, how you got into the MPFL. I heard part of the story of your desire to be educated as a mortician and how the problem screamed that you had to come home to the burial of one of your relatives and you sort of got My stuck. My grandfather, the yeah. name R.L.S. Okay, I'm sorry, yeah. thank you. That yes. led me to, that led me being part of the MPFL because at the time there was not SM Brothers, so we had Sabina, normal mm -hmm. days. You mm -hmm. know, there were Sabina Airways, or not SM Brussels. Mm -hmm. And SM Brussels was coming to the country on three occasions some fri mon mon what? Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Mm -hmm. And I came home on, on Wednesday because we had to go, we had to come to Kirsberg to bury my grandfather. That was in May of 1990. And my father at the time worked for Lamco, you know. So. I was received at the airport on Wednesday evening, went to Buchanan, and we left Buchanan Friday to come to Morovia to have the body removed. I don't know which funeral was it. The other day, I think, was A.B. Anderson or Summer or, or the lady that used to be the striker before, Chris, Chris Parnell, I think. Yeah. And then uh, we left Buchanan that Friday, and we came. While we were burying my father on May 19th, which was on Saturday, we got an information that began had been captured by rebels. And 
we left Bikano to come to Kiris Bay to bury my grandfather, to go back to Bikano. So I left my passport, my ticket, everything in Bikano. Then how come I got called out? I did not complete my profession. I did not complete my studies. I think I did nine or ten months into my profession. Mm -hmm. But I turned the practical already because when I was in Bikano, going to school, growing up, at the time Mr. Bidel, Fred Bidel had his funeral in Bikano. And I was friendly with his children. That how come I started having interest in this profession. Mm -hmm. So the key thing is, do you feel that you were forced into joining MPFL or did you get inspired by the revolutionary vision that it was presented to you to join in the struggle? If I say I was forced, then I will be going contrary against the ethic of the organization. I will not fool. I will in the join. I said it at the early stage, sir. Okay. Do you feel that the, what was the general goal and objective of the MPFL, which became MPP, and that you are still now a diehard with that you are striving to achieve and do you believe that you all have achieved that goal in any way? As a matter of fact, I think it was the, this war arising came up from the, from, from the people. The people wanted a change. That's mm -hmm. why we became part of it. But because of those that were involved, other people, like this war started from Bhutto. We listened to the Senator General, General Johnson. General Johnson had not this entire war would have lasted for a very short time if General Johnson had not deflected by going on his own. He said because they told him to go to the border there was no answer, he went on his own. The kill people. I want to talk about the kill people here, man. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. So that's your answer. So you're saying then that you have not really achieved your goal, but General Johnson was the seed that brought the enmity and confusion that caused the war to we last are, we, as we, long we, as it we did? We accomplished our goal because we went through elections and we became victorious. We won the election in 1997. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, it's all politics. Me, I'm not a politician. I'm a, uh, I, I'm, I'm a politician. I'm a soil man. I won't go on to that aspect because I know very little. Mm -hmm. But you felt the goal was achieved, so you're happy with the results in your sense, considering the bloodshed and the pain that has brought if upon our country. Be better, I'm a bracelet, my mind's a knocker. If you say bloodshed, I regret the situation. I know whatsoever happened, I think it was not intended for the revolution being so, for which I was part of. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I regret the situation of people. In fact, I regret the situation, and I want to say this openly, my own very little sister was raped. So you can't tell me that this was a situation that I was impressed with or I envisage it. No. If I come according to what was planned, it would not have been so. So I, this is a situation I regret. You know, our soldiers, some even some of my soldiers that were assigned with me, we went through some area, we went through villages, we went through towns, and the people willingly gave us the cattle, they gave us the goat, they gave us the sheep, they gave us the chicken. And you know, we eat all the people chicken, we eat all the people goat. And you know, the, the additional people, the native people, they will give out the cattle, they will give out the sheep, they will give out the, the chicken, but they will give out the dogs because the dogs were the protection. The dogs lead them and protect them in the bush. But after we, we ate all the people chicken, then we'll still go for the dogs. You know, so this is a situation that we regret. We, can't, we, 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 we infringe on the rights of the people. We infringe on the rights of the surveillance. We regret this situation. That's why this commission was formed for us to come here to say sorry to those people. We wrong them. We, we apologize to them. We use this occasion to say sorry our people for what happened. Thank you. That's a beginning. Okay. Um, I noticed also that you told us that you have been properly trained for the kind of work you've done. After you joined, was it that there was an opportunity that came up for this training or what? Could you just shed yeah, a little light well, on that? I was one of those selected among my friends to go for training because of my smartness, because of I was educated, I was out of high school at the time, I had traveled, I had broad experience, so just by my interaction with commanders and so I, I was selected among other friends, you know, to go for my junior commando training. Okay, what year was that, please? The late 91, 92. Okay, so that was after the death of Samuel Kayando. Indeed. Okay. We, we were made to understand that the original goal of the MPFL was this issue of getting rid of Doe. 
because of the problems that he was creating for the country, at least alleged by the people. But here you have a situation where the major enemy now is dead and there's hope for the rebuilding of the country, but yet you're mobilizing people for more extensive warfare and destruction, that period of 1991 to 1997. So what did MPFL's motivation change at that point to become I must have power, period, or what happened then? Well, I, I'm quite sure, first of all, I'm quite sure for knowing who my commander-in-chief was or who my commander-in-chief is, His Excellency, that was Charles G. Taylor. If President Taylor had arrested Samuel Doe, the late President Samuel Doe, he would have been alive today. I can tell you that. But uh, the whole process went there was no more intention after the death of the late Doe, that should have been the end of this whole thing but there were other problems that came in involving Ekomo coming in to one Dunga Yaro came here and said he wanted MPF for the five miles away so so that poor that put us into onto another another level that we had to defend ourselves okay so in essence now the new training was to defend yourself against the Ekomog and the other forces that were looked at as a new enemy in a way. The government sent you for training is to defend the nation. I will defend myself. I, I, I need to, de my, I can defend my own self by not even going for training, but we're trained to defend this nation. But what I'm saying, if you're being attacked, you have to defend yourself. That's the first thing. If I had not defend myself, I made myself vulnerable, you won't be having DKB here to be testifying to this thing, the truth, like how other people can here and mislead you people. Everything I've seen here, sir, is the truth. I came here not to lie. I'm from a good family. And I, 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 I got my children. They, they got future. I'm not going to sit there to mislead this because I know other people out there listening. It's so good. And uh, Mother dear, and uh, uh, Madam Boo, yeah, in fact, she even she knows my aunt and all. So you see that she knows my mother. So I'm not going to sit there. I, I'm, I, it will be disrespect if I come in and lie to other people. So help me God. If I, if it ever happens, I said on my way back to Mankibi County. Let whatsoever happen if I come here to lie today. Okay, thank you. So your concept then during that period of ninety one to ninety seven of defending your country when Liberia technically was uh, no man's land with two different countries in a sense, the uh, organized government in the greater Liberia and the organized structure in the lesser Liberia. What was your country at that point? What was the Liberia that you were defending then? What was the, the source of that sovereignty, in your opinion? Uh, Commissioner, uh, 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 in respect to what? You, you, you the see, position I'm, of I'm, the Liberian people? Yeah, during the time of before the coup, like now, for example, we have a country, right? The election is taking place, we're restored, there's sovereignty. Even during the world, we have country. Okay, well, think about it now. During the time of 1991 to 1997, the so-called concept of Liberia didn't exist because we, the president had been killed. The nation was in chaos. There were two different sets of countries claiming themselves to be the sovereign head, the people in the greater Liberia, the people in the lesser Liberia. So if I'm just concerned from the heart of those who were fighting in MPFL, what was the vision of the country that they were focusing on? Was it the old Liberia in your mind, or was it Charles Taylor's leadership and his head as a nation, or what? We envisioned our country and wanted to see our country back to its normal footing. That's why. I think we were involved, if mm. I may answer your question correctly. Hmm. Well, it's not what I expect, but anyway, I respect your answer. Thank okay, you. moving on to my last one. <clears throat> during this time, one of the key things that we're also concerned about, during the case of war, is understood when fighters are confronting each other who have been well-trained, militarily empowered, that there will be death and destruction. But the law provides that that should be within a certain realm of the rule of law meaning soldier killing soldier okay that's reasonable but they should not go and destroy innocent property public no. property they shouldn't hurt civilians no. they should be willing to give their life in fact to protect innocent civilians but in our particular case of this war we see that almost 80 to 90 percent of the people who no, maybe i'm exaggerating but let's say 50 to 60 percent of the people who died were just the simple innocent civilians they were raped, they were looted, they were cascaded, they were cut up and looking to bed, dead bodies. And so what 
happen in your particular case are you saying that with the group you dealt with none of this was committed or was it committed but you don't see yourself as being responsible for it or do you see yourself being responsible for it and apologize to the people? You know, I'm trying to understand your particular unique yes, situation. Yes, let me just put it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. We regret the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We regret the situation. Oh, okay. That's so you are responsible, say. but you regret the situation. Indeed, indeed. Okay. If I have gone into this country, led men to front line, I, had, I control a division, I control uh, during the crisis, I control a division, then after elections, I've been chosen to control a battalion within the armed forces of Liberia. Then I, I say I'm not responsible. I'm responsible. We regret okay. the situation. That's why we're here to say sorry. Thank you. And I to respect, apologize, sir. I respect that statement. Thank you. Last one. Uh, would you say that you personally, during the time you held the gun, have ever found yourself having to commit one of these violations of international humanitarian law or human rights laws or crimes against humanity yes we did even no. if I if I did not personally violate it so your on my command violated okay. so indeed we stay responsible we carry on some violation like for instance maybe we came into this town and then uh, we took we living among the surveillance but you know how some of the children behave they cleaning their arms in the presence of surveillance. You know when you clean your arm, obviously you have to try it. Well, you know, so that led to some surveillance, you know, not being comfortable among us that they had to leave. It was a, it was not right. You, we come into this village with living with the people uh, and, and suddenly they have to leave because of our behavior. No, we, 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 we did, I must admit to some violations that was carried out. If an opportunity was be provided where some of these civilians who felt offended by your actions could be able to have a forum directly with your presence, would you be willing to apologize I thought, and I thought some of those people were here right now for us to sit down and harmonize it. We talk, we, we shake hands, we, we hug because my heart is clean. I wish we had some. I just thought when you came to the TRC, you had people here that did, you, maybe you did wrong to and they were here and we settle here and for us to move forward. That's the only way we can move forward. It's not so easy when there's been death and destruction, but we have to see somehow how we can try to provide that forum. So it's not something like a game. So I urge game. you, I admonish you, and for sure I beg you, let's see how best we can bring this thing to pass. Okay, thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you again, mm -hmm. Mr. Witness. <clears throat> uh, you have just said you regret the situation that uh, you are sorry for all the things that happened during the period but yet you say you are a diehard member of the MPFL don't you sense a contradiction when somebody say no you are not showing remorse and you don't really regret instead you are boasting yeah, but I think Commissioner, maybe I don't know, Bob, you may be right, but I think I'm seeing it from the bottom of my heart. I can I I, I say I'm part of the MPF, but I'm part of the MPP. I'm seeing it from the bottom of my heart. That does not mean I don't regret. If I would say I'm no more part of the MPP, I'm no more part of the MPF, and then tomorrow because we had a January, the other the MPP had a January. I was not there because I was far off. But I think we have another one on the 13. I will be there. Then we'll come here. I tell the people, say, I'm sorry. I'm no more with MPP. Then they go see me there. I misled them. I think I've seen it from the bottom of my heart. I'm still part of this organization. But indeed, we regret the situation. Whatsoever happened, we were involved. We took part of it. We took part, but we say sorry. Thank you. You, you also said there was an order. <clears throat> requiring that all AFL soldiers be taken to the front. Mm -hmm. I initially asked if that order was written. You said yes. Oh, there were order published. It was published. There were order published. All okay. AFL, yeah, in fact, there were muster at the BDC. That all soldiers should muster at BDC for briefing, for to be sent to the, oh yeah, there were orders. So the order was issued from the CRC. Well, if you talk about the military, Anyway, I know you down, down your area on the Steve in that year, but when you talk about the military, order comes from the top. Yeah, chain of command in the army. I want to be, I want to be clear who issued the order. The chief of staff, the defense minister, 
He was the chief of command from the commander in chief, defense minister, chief of staff, deputy chief of staff, commanding general, battalion commanders. The order was published. The order published, yeah. Who signed the published order? Well, perhaps the commander, which the commander in chief, will say, "Look, call the defense minister, say, look, publish an order, look, all soya today, all soya the armed forces of Liberia should take pay on Friday. That order will be published." Um, Mr. Defense Minister, issue an order for all soldiers to go to the front line, and that would be the responsibility of the Defense Minister. Thank you. Tell us um, with which unit, battalion, Captain Prince Sumo was at the time of his death. Who? Captain Sumo. Captain Sumo. Can you say which unit? He was with the 4th Battalion. He was with one of the battalions. Battalion. Yeah, and the full battalion that assigned, I think the full battalion from Grand Jira or somewhere, but he was in town. Who was the head of that battalion? Full battalion, sir, I can't remember, but it was a corner, maybe I think a corner of Flumo, for which I don't know, but the, 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 the head of that battalion has to be a corner, a battalion commander. Yeah, yeah battalion commander. The battalion commander. Yeah. You don't remember his name. No, but I think it's gonna flow more. Probably I can I can investigate and get back to you some other time. That would be great. Okay. But was that battalion also under your command? It was not under my command, but the order was passed for all air soldiers. Okay, it wasn't under your command. No. But somebody called you and told you this soldier has jumped and broke his neck and you gave the orders that he should be buried. Oh yeah, because that was my control area at the time. Were you on the front at the time or you were here in the front? I was in town, but I was assigned to the front line. That's what I'm saying. So the Mecca area I had jurisdiction. was your control area? Yes, yes sir. And you felt it was within the scope of your authority to authorize this barrier? Yes sir, more especially at the front line. So, so yeah, that, that was, that was why I said Honorable Commissioner, if we were to bring soldiers that died, Probably wouldn't have had. Maybe Central Street would, would be from Benson Street, that stuck to Benson Street because we're going to take all the quota to bury people. In the face of the family's claims at the time and the general public impression that was created about it, was there an investigation of how Captain Sumo really died? Oh, 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 yeah. There were investigations carried out the Ministry of Defense. That's where it started from, in fact, only the Daniel Chair called the family members and main sat up for, for a forum and for which we discussed for them to know clearly because everybody felt the news Roman had it that I had killed Captain Fulmo in front of the Ministry of National Defense for which it was not done so I did not do it. Do you remember who called you from the front to give you this information that he died and Yes, it was the commander that designated on the pickup, the late Ernest Quebo. It was the pickup commander. It was the commander on the commander at the front line. Yeah. He, okay. Yeah, the commander he the was heading that line. Yes. They, 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 I had a commander based at the front line. But Ernest, he had come with on the square book. Square book. A little grow ball. And you say he's dead now? Yeah, he died. He died from? World War Three. He died in Douala. Okay, uh, you spoke of the SBU. Did it occur to you at any point in time that these little boys were very vicious during the course of the operation. Indeed. Were there any mitigating action taken to minimize their atrocities or to discourage them from what they were doing? Because there are a lot of hideous stories about what they did. Well, no, there were no actions taken into that respect. Because they they they, they were they, they all wanted to be part of the part of the movement. They willing it. They were they were not fools. They all wanted to be part of the movement. Okay. Mr. Daniel here, Briswell. Your testimony has just ended. I want to thank you very much for coming, for throwing light, for clarifying, for providing your position and most of the issues that have arisen. You also provide information we are confident has added some value to our work. Is there anything you'd like to say finally before you leave? 
Yes, sir, Honorable Commissioner. I would like to say this process is very good, but I think this process will be incomplete without the president or former Liberian president, Charles G. Taylor. So I don't know how you guys are going to get around that, but your work will be for naught if President Taylor does not come here to testify. And all what we've been doing, well, you know, our time spent here. Sometimes ago, I remember you used to stay at the 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night. So I, I urge you, I admonish you, see how best we can get this thing to pass. And the second thing about this, this, I see a lot of people coming here and talking about America, Liberia, and talking about the indigenous people. I think this situation, you have to get involved seriously. You know, let me just put it this way. The Bible says, why do the hidden rings they imagine vain things? You know, the America, Liberia, this thing here, uh, even right now, since we buried my father, my mother had the opportunity, my mom went to the States, and she came back just a few months ago. And when she came back, the people from the half town around Kerisberg, they brought one little girl to live with my mom. My mom said, oh, I want no girl. You got girls, children full of problems. If I can find me one little boy, I would, I would accept the boy. They went and brought a little boy. The poor person is living with my mother in Kerrisburg. He's going to school. And for some other reason, they call the boy Bill Gates. The American librarian, they train the native man, they educate the native man. That's why you see today, even before, who they, they never had no flomo, no calling in the house of representative today. They got it. They will thank God, thank you for that. But this thing about this president say it belongs to the American librarian. Yeah, they are the people have it, or you are living with us. The minister, the representative position there will be for you. But this thing, if we don't handle this thing, it will bring problems to this country, Honorable Commissioner, I'm telling you. Some people come here, they're expressing that view when it comes to the additional thing, and miracle liberal thing, let us stop it. If we don't stop it, it will be the next problem in this country. So you have a responsibility to handle this thing. Yeah. Okay. This America, the executive, you're living with the people, you're living with all. We'll give you the ministerial position, the representative, you're leading thing that they, that they let it be, so they'll run the country that they. We educate, the people educated, you are the train you today, everything fine, they leave it, they think yeah. May the okay. Almighty God bless the work of our hands and state to state. I thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. I would just like to make a little comment on the two things you said. Commissioner Bu just reminded me that uh, the commission has exerted all efforts to make sure they have access or give Mr. Tita an opportunity. And you rightly say that you are a person to Indeed. former President Tita. Let me say, yeah. Uh, Mr. Cameraman, you interrupting him. What is that? And in fact, let me say, I'm, I'm no, one just, of the... Okay. You did, your testimony is over now. Let me just... All right. Because, uh, you did say you were related, right? Indeed, yeah. I'm sure, and you desirous of making sure this process is successful. It will be good family members like yourself and die-hard NPFL people can communicate with the former president that he knows it's important that he avails himself to the process. I'm sure that will be a contribution. And secondly, you made a very, very important point about people not driving through this native indigenous uh, labyrinth divide. But unfortunately, your comment seems to reinforce this division where you say that the presidency should be reserved for Congo people and the native people. You use the word native. You didn't even say the indigenous. Yeah, you said native. Right. Where the native people should be satisfied that they have been treated. I think those are unfortunate comments. Okay, I'm, I and apologize for that. It's even more unfortunate that you are using this forum to say that. Yeah. We're speaking of unity and oneness and reconciliation. For us, we don't see the native country divide, and you're right, it's part of our responsibility to make sure that Liberians, you know, go beyond that, and we hope that all of us can make those contributions. So thank you very much, sir, and you may kindly leave now with the thanks of the commission. Thank you very much.